18 is the age one is considered an adult in Kenya. It is also the age one can legally drink alcohol, smoke, and give consent for sex. But that could all change if the proposal of some court of appeal judges to lower the age of consent to 16 years goes through. Now, as we speak, any sexual activity with a person under the age of 18 is considered sexual abuse and is criminally sanctioned. Now, the three judges, Roslyn Nambuye, Daniel Musinga, and and Patrick Kiage said on Monday that the debate on lowering the age of sexual consent was long overdue as men were languishing in jail for sleeping with teens, quote, who were willing to be and appeared to be adults, end quote. So where does this leave us? And if these proposals go through, what does it mean moving forward? Well, my guests are in studio. Let me introduce them really quickly. Lawyer Elvis Abenga. We also have a child rights technical advisor, Juliet Gashanja, and theologian Michael Mutinda. Thank you so much for coming in. And I guess just to give context to this whole conversation, all week, all over the media, there have been so many versions as to what this means. But let me begin with you, Elvis. Where did it stem from? Okay, thank you. Uh, this whole debate stemmed from a ruling uh, uh, of the Court of Appeal, which was actually an appeal from uh, the High Court decision. Uh, there was uh, the gentleman who had been convicted uh, of defilement mm. and uh, was seeking to have that conviction overturned. And so uh, the court considered various factors amongst others uh, the fact that the age of the child who was said to have been defiled uh, could not be sufficiently prove, right. proven in court and used that alongside other grounds to actually overturn the conviction and then uh, in passing towards the conclusion of the judgment uh, the the court of appeal uh, made a statement saying that it's time we reconsider this uh, conversation with regards to the lowering of the age of consent with regards to sexual activity and possibly even uh, amending the sexual offenses act to that effect and that of course stirred a lot of reaction from Parents as well thinking, my 16-year-old, we cannot even begin to have that conversation. Yes. Um, Juliet, from where you sit, what if these proposals do become something concrete? Yes. What are the implications? Um, so it's sad when I think about it to talk about um, lowering the age of sexual consent because we are not only talking about lowering the age of sexual consent, you're talking about lowering the age of consent period. And um, if you look at the laws, um, there is the Marriage Act, for instance, that talks about children being uh, children not being married. Um, there is the Counter Trafficking in Persons Act, which talks about children not being trafficked. So once we lower the age of sexual consent, it means that children can now consent and um, or assume that they can consent. And that means that if ever we bring a case against any perpetrator for sexual exploitation, for child marriage, um, for child labor, then you know, you're told you're a 16 year old, you, you consented, so you have to show that you did not actually consent to it. So we have to broaden this thinking about consent and not just limit it to sex in terms of consensual or where two children actually are in a relationship and they're doing what would probably be naturally possible and have sex. Right. So it goes beyond just sex. There is the question of sexual exploitation, child prostitution, child, por child pornography. Um, and I keep saying this, look, right now we are thinking it's the boy child who's being affected. But imagine this on the converse, if a boy child um, is defiled and he's 16 years, so assuming you've lowered the age to 16 years, right. and a boy child is actually defiled, and he goes to the police station and says, you know, I was defiled. What will the police say? When in Wanaume, Jipange, you know? Yeah. And how many of these cases will actually disappear? Um, because mm -hmm. now children will have to prove force. You know, the, the prosecution will have to show that indeed there was usage of force. Right. If we lower the age of sexual consent, we have to show, we have to, for cases of, for instance, child trafficking, we'll have to show that the child, there was cases of defrauding, we have to prove def uh, being uh, fraudulent, we have to prove force, we have to prove deception, all these things. So we are burdening the child mm -hmm. with having to prove all these things in genuine cases. I don't think the issue actually here is the law, Victoria. I think 
there is much more than yeah. um, it's the eye. Yeah. So basically, it's opening up a Pandora's box of yeah. other yes. issues if we go that route. Yes. Um, you know, Michael, you've also been very, very vocal when it comes to issues like the comprehensive sexuality yes. education, which yeah. we'll get to eventually. Yeah. Um, but f when you heard this, the first time what was going through your mind just in terms of where have we gotten in terms of mm. uh, society yeah um thank you uh, victoria and also citizen and for this opportunity to discuss this matter so when i first heard about this um, a part of me was not surprised because there's been a narrative that has been building up mm. over the years and uh, we've been following it closely um, but uh, just like Juliet has mentioned, uh, realize this is beyond just uh, lowering the edge of consent. And uh, I looked at, at the decision the judges made and uh, what the conversation was all about. And I think they were wise and courageous uh, because they invited the nation mm -hmm. to look at the issue at hand. There's an issue of injustice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which uh, very few people are aware of mm -hmm. um, um, who have suffered this um, kind of predicament like Eliud. Yeah. And we need to look at that. But there's also the issue of greed, uh, because when you look at uh, what really happened in this scenario, is that um, if the parents of the girl got the 80,000 from Eliud uh, as dowry, we'll not be talking. So we are looking at big things here um, as a result of loss of value, you know, as a society. And so this, this is a symptom. And uh, if we don't get this discussion and if we don't change our mindset you know as a society right. and if we don't question ourselves where, where are we going um, we are going to see more and more of this and uh, we'll continue going down so i think uh, borrowing a leaf from uh, the judges i think it's time to have that pragmatic sober discussion mm, right. about values about morality in our country in our nation and that's what it is so it goes beyond the age of consent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wonder what the case has been in, in other countries. Uh, when you look at the numbers, 76 countries in the world have set it at 16. Yeah. Uh, then you have 26 countries that have set that at 15. And uh, for the age of 13 as a legal age for sexual consent, five countries have done that. This was a shocker. Nigeria mm. is at 11 wow. years. And you're wondering, okay, okay, this is in Africa. What, why <laughs> are we dealing with an yeah. age of consent that young? Yeah. Um, Elvis, and I also bring that to you, Juliet, but let me begin with you. Yeah. Okay, uh, you see, there's variation. Uh, different jurisdictions uh, consider different things yeah. with regards to setting uh, the age of majority and the age of, age of consent. For instance, in Kenya, uh, the very first act that uh, set the age was, is actually called the Age of Majority Act that sets a general age of 18 for anything, right. yeah. Now, uh, for countries like Nigeria, Nigeria is a country that has deep customary law entrenched mm. into it, yeah. Mm. And even they have uh, these kingdoms that uh, run parallel to the government as well. Their traditions play a big role in what they define. So in a, in a community where uh, the community traditions would allow for that type of uh, uh, relation, even marriage with a child uh, who's over puberty right, age, right. then you would understand why that would find itself into the law at that mm -hmm. point to set it at 11 years old. Yeah. But then, of course, we have uh, various states, even in the United States, that mm -hmm. uh, have various reasons why they set at 16, right. at 17, at 15. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's pretty much just the society at the, at the age at that point. And that is why I think uh, when you look at the judgment uh, that the Court of Appeal is saying, it is time to interrogate uh, this conversation because the, 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 the judges were coming from a point of view that uh, these children still engage in sexual activity. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. It's time as a society we stop hiding and uh, imagining that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So now how do we handle that at that right. point right. became mm -hmm. the issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, Juliet, of course, we also have to talk about, and it was mentioned earlier, the, the whole issue of young men who find mm -hmm. themselves in jail uh, for a sexual violation crime. And, and many times it's because they engaged with their girlfriend yeah. or 
we can't really say consenting minors because there's no <laughs> such thing. But they both knew basically what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, the boy takes the fall, unfortunately. Yes. What are some alternatives to deal with this particular issue? Because it is really unfair and unjust. Yeah. Oftentimes it's used as a blackmailing tool yeah. um, to, to bring someone down. But how do we deal with that problem? Yeah. Actually, I'll say um, you're, you're right by saying that it's actually a black, blackmailing tool, as, as uh, Michael said it. Um, I have seen from experience, I've, I've uh, represented children, watched before children who are victims. And at first, the parents will come, you know, to you as a lawyer and say, you know, my child was hurt and, you know, they're really feeling it, right? And then um, you say, okay, this is the date set for court and you go to court. And they call you and they say, no, um, my, sh my child fell sick. And then you call them later to your office and they say, actually, you know, we, we, did, we negotiated, we agreed on this. Um, and I have also had the chance to visit a lot of child, especially remand homes for children. And I have found so many children who, uh, boy ch uh, boy ch the boy child is actually there. And he tells, you know, it happened. Of course, I'm not, um, as a boy at this age, I cannot take care of a family. I cannot deal with the consequences mm -hmm. and responsibility of being, uh, having sex now, yeah. but I, it happened and now I'm here because our parents could not actually agree. I say this, um, I train magistrates, prosecutors and the police and I tell them, if you look at the, um, the definition of uh, defilement, for instance, in the Sexual Offences Act, yeah. it's actually very clear. It is, if you allow me to use, uh, yeah. to say this, um, it is the causing of penetration. Yeah. And the word causation, just right there, either a girl or a boy can actually both cause penetration, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so therefore, the, then becomes a question of who lured who and all these exactly. things. And a lot of times I've told the police, and this practice for whoever, the ones who've done it has worked. I've told them, when the parent comes to complain, of, especially of the girl, mm -hmm. tell the boy child, tell, uh, tell them to bring their daughter. So the, the boy is arrested and the girl is arrested and they're put in the cells and they stay there for like, a, uh, you know, just for the day. And their parents sit outside and actually say, no, 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 wait. We do not want our children in this. Mm -hmm. So first, I want to think. I want to say this: that first, the problem is not the law as is; it is the selective application of that law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that means that we can obviously find alternatives yeah. um, to this. So where we have been able to discuss, especially if I'll give an example of Malindi, where we have uh, the Child Protection Centre, mm. uh, we have encouraged uh, continually the, uh, the, the prosecution and the police to make use of the CPC. That's yeah. what we call it in short. And where this, this kind of cases come, because in Mombasa and Malindi, there are quite a lot of those cases, mm. um, that they address it um, as both children, especially when it comes to children, yeah. as children in need of care and protection. So that way the children both receive counseling mm. and they serve, you know, uh, non-custodial law. It's not even, they don't even need to go to court. Yeah. Yeah. So they just go and they get, they get counseling and, you know, um, and they're told, you know, you shouldn't engage in this until you're this age because the law assumes them mm -hmm. you're a criminal, right. Right? Right. right? So that is one, that is one of the ways in which, um, the, one of the alternatives. Now, the other alternative is um, as a task force, uh, the, the task force that I work for in NCAJ, uh, one of the things we are proposing is guidelines to give effect to one of the sections in the Sexual Offences Act, which yeah. talks about sentencing a child uh, who's been found guilty or culpable under the Sexual Offences Act, uh, Section 8 particularly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're proposing is where there's a, uh, where there's an, what, what other countries are calling it, uh, close age, uh, closing age. Uh -huh. um, so where you have a, a gap of about two years okay. uh, for the two children, especially children, yeah. um, then we can consider diversion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the diversion right now, and one of the problems you're having, the laws we do not have diversion. Yeah. Um, but one of the things, the Children's Bill, which is a new law, which is uh, hopefully going to get into Parliament soon, is proposing is, uh, one of the things that we're actually proposing is a diversion. Okay. So if we actually get these guidelines uh, to be passed and gazetted, then they will work very closely. Then we can divert most of these cases where there's mm -hmm. this closing age, where the two children actually say, look, we're in a relationship. They will uh. not, we're not calling it consent because mm. the law as is, I wouldn't want to, to suggest or even propose something called consent. So like a Romeo and Juliet kind of yeah. clause. Yes, yeah. a Romeo and Juliet kind of a clause, but without calling it, because with Romeo and Juliet, every country, South Africa, yeah. uh, the UK and the rest, if you look at them, they all call it consent. They call it consensual sex, mm. but 
in Kenya because you don't want to touch that consent. It goes the other way, it goes out of the yeah, window very yes, quickly. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so one of the things we are just going to say is um, what we are proposing is uh, three things. Uh, you know, so first of all, there's a closing the age, yeah. uh, age gap between the two children, um, and then there is a victim impact statement. So there would be a victim will write and say, we are in a relationship, we can, I can confirm that this is my boyfriend, this is my girlfriend. And once the prosecution who have the, the, the mandate under the uh, criminal procedure code to divert such cases, yeah. once they convince themselves of this, then they can divert this matter. So that's actually an alternative and we're hoping that mm. these uh, guidelines uh, are gazetted. Yeah. Mm. Let's see if that, you wanted to respond Yes, yes, yeah. I just wanted to add something. Yeah? We have uh, rules under the Children's Act that are called the Child Offender Rules. Yeah? While uh, the guidelines are being formulated, these rules are still in force. Mm. Uh, and uh, part of the guidelines that uh, the rules give is uh, uh, partially with regards to sentencing. Uh, the general mood of the law is that non-custodial sentences are preferred for ch child offenders okay. as much as possible. So well, you would find a situation where a child has uh, been found guilty yeah. of uh, defilement uh, of another child, but because of the circumstances around it, the judicial officer might have some discretion, okay. a bit of discretion to, uh, in handling that situation by dint of the fact that this is a child offender. Right. But that is totally different when the perpetrator is an adult. Mm -hmm. Because when we're talking about consent of a child, yeah, there's, a, there's a sexual uh, act between two children yeah, mm -hmm. as well as the sexual act between an adult yeah. and, a and a child. child yeah, right. that brings uh, now when it's an adult who has had sexual uh, of, uh, conduct with an, a child, then at that point the mandatory sentences uh, that are provided by the Sexual Offences Act kick in. It's mm -hmm. a criminal. Offense it becomes now. a yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a full criminal offence. Right. But however, uh, there's one uh, one uh, small uh, d uh, thing I'd like to mm -hmm. mention. Section eight of the Sexual Offences Act has a what we'd call a defense okay. uh, mm -hmm. which some people use uh, it's called the deception defense where someone uh, an adult for instance uh, says I honestly did not know that this was a child mm -hmm. Uh, I was deceived. Uh, she acted as a as, a, as, as an adult, as an yeah. adult. Yeah. 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 and if uh, an accused person actually successfully convinces the court that uh, the, by all standards yeah. he thought that this was an adult, then that's a defense, and he can mm. get acquitted because wow. of that. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why. I think it was last year, the year before, there was this judgment that uh, came out and it was ranked the world's worst judgment. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes I remember yeah, that. Yeah the, yeah, the judge followed along that defense okay. to actually provide an acquittal on that. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I want to kind of take this, swing this into the, the moral aspect of it, yes. uh, Michael. Elvis mentioned that we can't keep burying our heads in the sand mm. when it comes to uh, the problem of, yeah. of minors engaging. Mm. You know, even if we put the age of consent at 30, they will still engage. Yeah. So how do we start to address? And of course, there have been uh, suggestions for the comprehensive sexuality education and, mm. and, and trying to make them more aware of mm. themselves, of mm. you know, the opposite sex and how to engage. What do you make of that suggestion? And what is your suggestion in terms of trying to, to deal with uh, sex with minors? Okay. Um, my suggestion is this, and this is what we've been um, advocating for uh, over the years, is that um, first and foremost, Kenya is basically a religious country. Um, we are a nation that is God-loving. Yeah. Uh, this is captured in our national anthem. It's also captured in our constitution. Um, and so we acknowledge the supremacy of God in our constitution, in the preamble. I think it's time. I think it's time we manifested that fact. Um, we've been not so serious uh, because at the end of the day, we look at morals. Um, we have the main stakeholder, who is God himself. He's the author of sex and is given guidelines on how this gift should be handled and uh, at what point uh, a man and a woman should engage and what is the purpose. Right. So we cannot dismiss what God has said, follow our own way and imagine we'll succeed. That will never happen. Actually, the way God has designed things is that anything done outside of his will brings destruction. And so the case applies to sex. Um, morals being what is right and wrong. Yeah. 
means that uh, he has a set standard. And so what is right is what is in line with the standard. And so looking at the whole thing, um, of course the approach that Juliet and Elvis are saying from the judicial point yeah. of view, but there's also the approach, what has God said? Uh, and this is where you know, the church comes in, the religious bodies comes in, I mean the parents come in. And we ask ourselves, what are the values that we want to instill in our children? What, what do we want? I mean, this, this, this is a gift. These nations are built mm. from families. I mean, if we move from the family to society, then a nation. And of course, we're talking about a family, we're talking about a man and a woman. And that's God's truth. Right. I mean, there's no argument about it. Actually, right now, we're in a war between two camps. One camp is saying God is. The other camp is saying God isn't. So one camp is saying what God says is true. It's true. And that's where we stand. Right. You know, and, and I see majority of Kenyans standing there that what God has said is true. It's true. And it's despite that, though, yeah. is that a bit idealist? Because as much as we know it's the right thing to do, the complete opposite is happening yes. among the young people. And they yes. say, we really don't care. Yeah. We'll yeah. do what we want. Yeah. How do you address that generation? So now the question is, why are they saying that? You know, when did the rain start beating us? See, and, and that's the conversation that we need not to engage in. And, I, and that's why I'm borrowing the leaf from the judges, that it needs a pragmatic, sober approach. Let's, ad, let's be humble enough and admit a monster came in amongst our youth at some point. And the youth are ours. So they're not a separate uh, entity from the society. And so w wherever that monster came in, it came in through with the adults. And we've been watching this thing growing. And we've left the way, you know, the way in terms of God's way in this thing. And so it's not idealistic. I mean, what God says is actually the reality. You know, people say the reality is that the youth are engaging in sex. That's the reality. I want to introduce as another reality. There's a God reality. And the God reality, which is more real, it says, you know, this is how you're supposed to walk. This is how you're supposed to engage this. And so I, I want us to have that engagement using the God's reality. Um, not unless we want to say we are still can do without God. And then let's see where you go. Time will tell who is right. But I can tell you, Anybody who has done anything outside of God has never gone anywhere. But you still haven't answered my question in terms of how do you engage a young person who says, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and I have, okay, they don't have the backing of the law because they're not at that age to yeah, consent yeah, yet, yeah. but how do you practically get to them, get the message yes. to them that there's other ways of doing this, you know, and, and, and sex is destructive mm. in the context that you're having it. How do you communicate that to them convincingly? Because, I mean, if you're talking from the standpoint of the church and the Bible and God, some people have been so disillusioned by that mm -hmm. and feel that the church even has no moral authority anymore because there's also corruption that has seeped in mm. to that uh, institution as well. Which angle are you speaking from okay. and how do you speak to them convincingly? What we are doing practically, and, yeah. this, and it's working yeah. beautifully, we're using discipleship. And uh, we're engaging the young people um, on that platform, yeah. you know, introducing them, telling them, look, um, God is real and God exists and God has everything pertaining to life and he has a way of if you want to be successful, there's a roadmap, there's a way of doing it. And so it's a choice. You either chose God's way or use the world's way. Now, if you use the world's way, it leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. If you use God's way, it leads to life. And so God's way is, is wisdom. The world's way is foolishness. And so we give them the option. We allow them to make the choice. And so, and we have seen it working. And we have got a, a lot of young people who are doing that. Yeah. I think, um, so just to answer that question on practical ability of how we are doing mm -hmm. this, how we are approaching mm -hmm. this, this is what we are doing and uh, it's working. Because uh, at the end of the day, we tend to glorify the evil, unfortunately. Um, what is bad, which is being done by very few people, becomes the news of the day. Right. But we, we don't focus on the good. So it gives the impression that yeah. everyone is doing yeah, it. Yeah, everyone is doing yeah. it. And then we take whatever everyone is doing, use that now <laughs> to oppress the good people. Yeah. Um, the church, like what you said, yes, let's be honest. I mean, there are some points the church has missed, you know, the marks. Yeah. And so we're going back to the basics. Again, discipleship is a key. Yeah. We have to go back to the word of God. We have to go back to the basics. What did he actually say? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord. So we believe in him. Can we build a society that he has said, this is how to build a society. This is the way to go. And so if we abide by his law, which is the yeah. mother of all laws, and his guidelines and regulations, then we succeed in this warfare. But like I said, yeah. God is, God isn't. That we're in the middle of a warfare. And so let's 
stand by what God is. God isn't is a foreign idea, and I think I'll share that more when we talk about the comprehensive social education, because that's okay. where we are seeing the issue. And we're actually running out of time, so really quickly, I want to get Elvis and Juliet, just your take on, and you know, of course, Michael has brought it up, the, our, our fabric of our society really is decaying, and, and how do we begin to remedy that? Um, you can speak from a legal perspective, <laughs> or personally, from what you've seen, where do we start to get back on track, I'll start with you, Elvis. I think uh, we, as a society, we are simply too busy. Mm -hmm. uh, my proposal is time for us to pause for a while and take and ask ourselves the hard questions. What, where did the rain start beating us? That is the only time. We find the reason, for instance, why children are engaging in sexual behavior at this point is because we have a lot of parents who just don't have time for the children, or children who've been neglected, mm -hmm. and so they're left to experiment and figure out life for themselves. So I would say it's time for us as a society to slow down and ask ourselves the hard questions before we can actually find solutions to them. Okay. Mm. Um, I'll say that first of all, we cannot choose the law to fix morality. Mm -hmm. um, I leave that to the parents, the pastors, the sheikhs, the you know religious leaders, that's our work. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as parents, that's our work. And unfortunately, when I talk to parents, a lot of parents, and I say, how many of you have heard the bees and birds talk with your children? And they all look, you know, <laughs> what, what is that? I don't want to say. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them have not had the time to actually discuss it. And you know what? And as he said, the, the TV is educating our children and, uh, uh, and other people are educating our children and not necessarily the right people. Yeah. Um, but also, I want to say this, I don't think the rain started beating us anyway. I think that's what we have been all along. Think about it. Uh, I was just sharing with them when we were waiting yeah. that um, back, you know, where our parents got married, uh, someone said, you know, you'd see a girl passing by and you'd just grab her and then take her to your house and she's your wife, right? So is it that we've become westernized or are we just <laughs> continuing with our behavior from before? Mm. The question I think that is, that is genuine, that can help us answer, you know, and help the youth and the young people yeah. today is asking ourselves why did we put up why did we start making laws that are protecting the vulnerable um what is it that we noticed um that sex does to young people for instance uh what is it that also has the government done for instance to make sure that we protect for the children we make sure that they are somewhere protected and they're not engaging in sex yeah so a good example is uh, government gave free education and subsidized education for high school so that anyone between the age of 0 to 18 is not one employed, two married, and three engaging in sex, right? right? But they're doing what is constructive for them. Mm -hmm. At least they have provided that uh, whatever. But that's just one. Yeah. What else did uh, held, uh, made us think that we are not, because when you say we are violating the rights of the child um, by allowing them to have age, the sex at the age of 18, what else are we shielding them from? And that is that. Then that helps us to um, have a discussion with young people, right. uh, either between even maybe even twenty years and below, right? But then I think um, as a as a country, I don't think we. I think we're just continuing what we were doing before. I don't even think that we have been influenced by anyone. I think it's just what was, and it is really time uh, to say, okay, uh, they have said, take a step back. Let's address this pragmatically. Right. Children, really, should you be having sex at this age, right. or would you rather be building your future? You know, and then you have, gosh, they have years and years to have this sex. They did not have to have it between now and <laughs> within the right 18, confines, right? right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Elvis, uh, Juliet, and Michael. We could have this conversation for much, much longer, but of course, uh, time is not on our side. But great insights and pertinent issues coming out of this. Hopefully, it starts discussions, uh, not just in this studio, but on mm -hmm. social media, at homes, in churches, in mm -hmm. mosques as well, that we need to address this as a society, as a collective, mm -hmm. and not just pointing the finger at each each other. Thank you so much for watching. That does it for Citizen Weekend. Have a lovely night. Let's do this again next week.